WVDE Policy 2340 covers the West Virginia measures of academic progress. You will commonly know these measures as School Day SAT, West Virginia General Summative Assessment, our Alternate Standard Assessment found in Dynamic Learning Maps, and our English Language Assessment, ELPA 21. The purpose of this policy is to provide an operational framework to administer an effective and efficient statewide assessment program and to provide procedures to protect the integrity of test data while supporting the use of assessment data to improve instruction. By achieving these steps, there's a reasonable assurance that all West Virginia students are being tested in the same conditions and the resulting data gives an apples to apples comparison not only of individual students, but between schools and between counties. Who can administer a West Virginia measure of academic progress test? A currently employed educator and or an approved employee of the state or county must hold a valid West Virginia teaching license, certification, or permit granted by the West Virginia Department of Education. That means you may be a substitute teacher. May be an aide serving as an examiner for students with disabilities when instructionally assigned. All aides must be providing services to the student during instruction and be approved by the Department of Education. This means someone not can be added as an aide to test a student just for testing. It must be a part of daily instruction. Also, everyone must be trained and have on file a signed examiner scribe secure test materials and procedures agreement known as Appendix F. And who will test? To meet federal and state guidelines, all public school students in grades 3 through 8 and 11 will be a test using the appropriate state administered summative assessment. It's either the general or the alternate at the grade level in which they are enrolled in the spring of each year. The West Virginia College and Career Readiness Assessment assesses the content in grades 11 of ELA, Math, and Science. All EL students shall participate in the appropriate state administered summative assessment in which they are enrolled. And this question comes up a lot, but all alternative education students are to participate based on policy 4373, and those scores do count to the school in which they are assigned to. Accommodations are another big part of understanding the test procedure as outlined in 2340. All public school students with disabilities who are eligible for services as defined in policy 2419 shall participate in the general summative, the college of career readiness, or the alternate standard assessment at the grade level in which they are enrolled with appropriate accommodations as determined by their IEP team. All public school students with disabilities as defined in section 504 shall participate in the general summative or the West Virginia College of Career Readiness Assessment in the grade level in which they are enrolled. Appropriate accommodations, if any, must be determined by the Student Section 504 Committee and documented in the Student Section 504 Plan and incorporated into WEVAS. And it cannot be understated the importance of providing appropriate accommodations during testing. Over-providing or under-providing accommodations is a significant irregularity and results in investigation by the West Virginia Department of Education Office of Assessment. Speaking of irregularities, the examiner must report testing irregularities on the provided tested irregularities form to the principal or county test coordinator as appropriate. All irregularities of student misconduct that represent student cheating, security breaches, test administration breaches, or copyright infringement shall be reported according to the guidelines outlined in this policy. Policy 2340 goes much more in depth to each type of irregularity and the resulting actions that could potentially take place. But in short, keep this in mind, there's no keeping it in house. When irregularities occur, it's unfortunate, but it must be addressed as outlined in policy 2340. Test security. Apart from the scheduled test administration to students, it's unacceptable and unethical to use, retain, reproduce, paraphrase, or discuss any manner 
of secure test materials, paper or electronic. Test security training must be incorporated as a part of the required training for each West Virginia measure of academic progress, as well as pilot test and field test sanctioned by the Department of Education. And a county test coordinator, principal, school test coordinator, or county school personnel found to have inappropriately used test materials in this manner will be subject to penalties included to, but not limited to, revocation of professional license certification permit as outlined in the policy. Lastly, the testing code of ethics addresses special concerns regarding appropriate professional practices within the measures of academic progress as well as appropriate professional conduct. The testing code of ethics supplements the practices and procedures set forth by policy 2340. And the contents of the testing code of ethics include test security, test administration, and test notification. Following Appendix A, you have Appendix B through H that must be signed. Those are those appendix that must be on file for you to be an approved examiner. Principals will sign an Appendix D, school test coordinators, an Appendix E, and an examiner scribe Appendix F. There are others that apply to very specific jobs such as county test coordinator, uh, technology, or other county personnel, but these are the most commonly used uh, documents along with Appendix I, which is a verification of the group that has been trained. All that must be on file um, at an appropriate time prior to testing each year. And each year, everyone must be retrained in policy 2340 as outlined in the expectations of the policy. Um, just keep in mind this is a thousand foot view of policy 2340. It doesn't cover every detail. It's encouraged that you read through policy 2340 at least prior to testing in the spring. Keep in mind when you sign your appendix you're actually indicating that you have read through policy 2340. So if you've never read it or it's been a while that you read it, um, you would be encouraged to read it. It's encouraged to read it every year and keep up to date to see if there's any changes to it. But as I said, that is a summary of policy 2340 and you'll receive more in-depth training uh, as it relates to and prior to testing and release of data and information.